Hello and welcome to the 74th episode of In Our Defense and a very happy Raksha Bandhan to all our viewers and listeners and a happy Raksha Bandhan to you, Abhishek. Yeah, happy uh, Raksha Bandhan to all our listeners and viewers, to you too, uh, to uh, all our colleagues yeah, who everywhere. are with us. Uh, usually people are at home enjoying yeah. their holiday, but uh, yeah, I mean, we are, not. Is, we are not as usual. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's a lean day, but, so good we got some time to record today. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Uh, so before we talk about what uh, the topic that we've chosen, and it's an interesting one because this is a topic that uh, subject actually that uh, I've been always wanting to talk to you about, but it's a very it's a one on which uh, it's very difficult for me to have a clear stand. But before we do, there's a request from our producer to introduce our latest uh, podcast that's joined our network of English podcast at India today, and that's called Health Wealth by a journalist called Sonali Acharji. She's a ten year old, or she has an experience of around ten years in health journalism, and uh, it's a show where you can learn lots about uh, anxiety, depression, cancer, preventive healthcare, and lots, lots, lots more. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure if this podcast was live when. Pand- the pandemic goes here. A lot of mm-hmm. us would be listening yeah. to this uh, this podcast. So to our listeners and viewers, do check it out. It's on our website uh, where you can find the podcast section. And it's also on, on all the platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, where you can find Inner Defense. If you find Inner Defense uh, on the on the platform, you'll find this as well. Just search for Health, Wealth and do enjoy and give it a listen. Right, Abhishek. So, uh, like I said, this topic, uh, mm-hmm. the subject, I, don't know, uh, I can't really... I find it very hard to have an opinion on it. Uh, I'll introduce to, uh, the topic to our listeners and view, uh, viewers by a press release from the Press uh, Information Bureau uh, of the government uh, where they basically said a, a chapter on the National War Memorial that was inaugurated by PM Narendra Modi, I think in 2019, uh, would be included in uh, school textbooks of class 7th. Yeah. Uh, this would be by the NCRT. So definitely will apply to CBSE board schools and will also apply to any other boards mm. that choose to follow the NCRT curriculum. Uh, not a lot of details yet on what the chapter contains uh, and whether it will be coming from this uh, year as uh, mm. in the first so now place. I've done a bit of uh, Achha, okay. background checks on this. Because I uh, I read a news report where the principals of few schools were confused. Were confused, yeah, yeah, I read that as well. In fact, I asked a former colleague who covers uh, education mm. and uh, she was kind enough to uh, send me uh, an e-link of the chapter. Achha. Yeah, so I've read the chapter. Okay. Uh, it's it's interesting storytelling, I would say. Right. And uh, first, you can go ahead and uh, introduce what the subject is. For the subject then, is, yeah. yeah, then yeah. I can so I'll just it. read from the release uh, that came out uh, from the PIB. <laughs> so the P uh, the release says that the chapter is called a homage to our brave soldiers, uh, and it's in the NCRT textbooks for class seven. Uh, the objective of the initiative, and I quote, uh, jointly undertaken by Ministry of Defense and Ministry of Education, is to inculcate the values of patriotism, devotion to duty and courage, and sacrifice among school children, and increase the participation of youth in nation building. And then it goes on to talk about how the chapter highlights the significance and the concept of the National War Memorial, uh, etc. And it talks uh, briefly, which I think Abhishek will be able to tell us a bit more, briefly about how the uh, chapter is structured. Basically, uh, two friends are exchanging letters yeah. and sharing their deep gratitude towards sacrifices made by several brave hearts over the years post-independence. Uh, before we go into what we want to go into and where I said uh, that I can't seem to make up my mind on how do I stand on this, Abhishek, you've read the chapter, so tell us a bit more. Yeah, about so it's an interesting uh, format, I would say, interesting storytelling uh, that uh, two friends exchanging letters and talking about uh, their experience. The first letter is written by uh, somebody who's visited the war memorial, right. uh, what her experiences are, uh, how she's introduced uh, to the brave hearts of the countries who've laid down their lives in uh, battles since 1947, uh, what uh, what kind of gallantry awards are given, the Paramvir Chakra, Mahavir Chakra, Veer Chacha, etc. Uh, the chapter also has a few citations of some of the brave hearts. Mm. Uh, so that's good. Uh, good in the sense that it's giving out decent detail. Uh, but I was curious to uh, sort of know that what sort of book is this? Mm. I mean, which subject? So I was told that uh, the book is called Honeycomb. And unlike in our times, uh, it's it's not it's not directly literature. Okay. Uh, it's just a list of readings, chapters right. on various uh, subjects, just a reading book. So one of the chapters is this, and then the friend replies, saying that uh, you know she's quite thrilled to listen to her f- friend's uh, uh, experience of going to the National War Memorial. It also gives out the letters exchanged. Also gives out the details of what the National War Memorial is. 
Uh, it had the, the fact that it has, has names of all people, people who've laid down their lives uh, for the country. So lots of interesting details. Mm. And I found the format quite interesting. Mm. Instead of just plain text putting together, it's a, it's in the in the form of exchanging of letters. Yeah. And uh, I like the, the bit where uh, the letters end. Uh, I think there was good, subtle uh, national integration messaging there. Mm. Uh, the first letter is written by a schoolgirl from uh, Bengaluru okay. uh, to uh, her friend who lives in Chandigarh. Mm. And it ends with that, I miss your mother's Chole Bhature. So the girl in Bengaluru is saying. And the other friend from Chandigarh, when she writes, uh, replies, uh, she said, we had fluffy idlis for breakfast. Two things a bit stereotypical, maybe. Yes, yeah. Yes. I was just going to say that. <laughs> yeah, Welcome. yeah, yeah. A bit stereotypical, uh, but uh, I think the subtle messaging is about uh, national integration, which is which is not a bad thing when you're talking about uh, the love for your country, patriotism, etc. Uh, because a great integral part of our nationalism is actually national integration. Of course. Because so many different cultures, yes. uh, so many uh, different ways of looking at things, uh, festivals being celebrated in a different manner. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, I think that messaging in schools is important. Uh, it's not triggered any controversy yeah, till now. Uh, rather than, except the fact that, which you mentioned that some news reports said that school principals are not aware. Uh, so yeah, somewhere there is this uh, understanding and I've spoken to some some of the colleagues who've covered education and mm. things like that, that uh, school principals are complaining that this is, they're not being kept in the loop. Mm. These things are just being thrust upon them. Right. Uh, not to say that they're complaining, Hmm. Uh, it's st still not part of the uh, published book. It's hmm. only the e-version that's come out. Right. Uh, the sense is that these things are, been, are not being deliberated. Hmm. You and I are not uh, specialists on education or educationists. Uh, so we wouldn't be able to really comment on what the procedure and process should be. Uh, the point, I think we want to talk about it whether this is a good thing, bad thing, should it happen, should it not happen, should there be a controversy, should there mm -hmm. be a, no, not be a controversy, isn't it? That, that's the point. Yeah. Uh, frankly, I don't see anything wrong with this being taught in schools. Hold on, but before you, before we go there, just <clears throat> a, a quick point of clarification. So you said this is part of a book called Honeycomb. Yeah. Uh, so is it not part of the mandatory curriculum that is taught to work. Oh, I'm assuming it's it's okay. part of okay. curriculum. It's, so it's what a, subjects does it fall under? Social science? No, it's an English reading book. Achha, what okay. what okay. That's earlier used confusion. to be okay. sort of okay. literature. Right, right, what right. right. You right. and I would look at literature. It's an English reading book. Okay. So yeah, English, okay, now I get yeah, it. So yeah. for the English subject, you had a list of books that were suggested. This is what you should read. Novels, yeah, yeah, plays, yeah, yeah. poems, poetry, etc. And this is one of the books so that suggested. Yeah, I, 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 I was told that uh, in the initial class 6, 7, you don't have literature, literature. You have reading. Right. Reading right, list. Right. And I think literature comes in class 8 or class mm -hmm. 9. Some, I, I'm not sure about these facts. Just telling you what uh, a colleague of mine has briefed on how the curriculum and structure yeah. work, works. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, frankly, personally, nothing wrong per se hmm. uh, with something like this being introduced uh, in school readings. Hmm. I mean, one wouldn't find anything, a, a problem with that. And I don't think there is uh, any uh, controversy or anything around it. I have a larger sort of view on it because uh, I'm quite passionate about uh, India's military history. Yes, I think uh, the love for history is not always inculcated through curriculum. Hmm. It's it's through it's it's a, it's a it's a way of growing up, hmm. and it's not one reading. You need to read more. See, when I was growing up, uh, I don't think there was any uh, school curriculum that had any of these things. Yeah. Uh, but all of us who grew up, we loved our country. Hmm. Uh, the school that I went to, as I said, uh, as, as as I've mentioned before, boarding school had a great military legacy. Yes. The the school has kind of uh, military recognitions that regiments would be proud of. Yeah. You know, first PVC, for example, which this also mentions Major Somnath Sharma, mm. uh, posthumous Paramvir Chakra, uh, a couple of Mahavir Chakras, uh, uh, two army chiefs, including one field marshal. Mm. And several three-star officers. So I grew up in a very organic, natural way, uh, understanding the value of these things. And having said that, uh, not a single, not a single of my batchmates from school joined the military. Hmm. 
So the point I'm trying to make is that even if you have that culture around you day in and day in night, it's not necessary that you you'll end up joining the military. Yeah. And anyway, the 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 culture over the last few years has been that you know it's the scenic schools who are ensuring that you uh, get uh, people in the armed forces. Uh, they're sort of uh, I wouldn't say trained, uh, but mentally trained that this is what they need to aspire to. So that's that's one aspect of it because I know where this is coming from. Uh, these kind of things to be put in school uh, curriculum is that kids are not aware of these things. Yeah. Now here is where I uh, have a larger sort of an opinion on it that you cannot make them aware the moment you put this as a chapter. Yeah, true. true. Rather it can become mundane. अरे यार ये तो school के लिए पढ़ा है so i don't know man i learned all this through newspaper readings when i was growing up mm. uh, 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 reading uh, magazines generally being aware i don't think that that the emphasis on those uh, aspects of growing up is there in schools as much as it was when i was growing up and also what the kind of environment you had at home mm. see i i cannot force my kids of i course. i do try to explain to them what all of this is Uh, but i realize that it doesn't come organically to yeah. them for whatever reasons maybe when they grow up they'll they'll be able to explain mm. as much as it came to me i don't think my kids uh, would have have the interest and 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 the mindset to grasp all of this the reason being uh, they've grown up in an environment where they've not heard war stories mm. that's also natural so maybe that's that's the reason I grew up in an environment where I heard war stories, war stories about people who had participated in war in family. Yes. So it makes a difference. So I think that's that's the gist of it. Uh, that uh, that's the reason why these things have been introduced. Uh, but whether whether they will make the necessary impact mm. is is the question. Well, that actually was one of the points I want to talk to you about because I completely agree with you when you say that uh, kids of our or Our generation, even my generation, for example, has not really uh, learned about this in school. If you, if you, if I give you my example, I learned about the seventy one war and the Kargil conflict uh, when the movies were released. And my father had a tendency whenever we used to go to watch a movie, either before or after, he would from his office get me printouts of reading material mm. on the actual events. Because yeah. obviously, films tend to fictionalize yeah, yeah, some yeah. aspects of it. And this is back the back in the day when internet was a luxury. So mm. his office mm. had internet, so he used to you know get, get me printouts. of actual articles written mm. by uh, journalists back then history etc etc so i learned about it yeah when uh, when uh, jp datta's uh, border released mm. which was mm. a part of the 71 war one of the battles that was shown in the in the in the, in the movie and also by jp datta the loc kargil the other mm. uh, grand movie that he made so i learned about these wars through the reading that my father got me uh, when because we were, of the film because of because of the films yeah so that was a trigger mm. uh, i'm not sure that happened for i'm pretty sure that it don't happen for a lot of my you know um, mm. classmates or schoolmates etc which is what i which is when i when you sent me this uh, the statement from the from the from from pib on this mm. i was a bit like agar karna hi hai so why not have a separate curriculum or a separate subject on just military history no, because that's is this going to be enough i feel that i am not sure that whether a subject is needed Th- okay. these are not military schools of course true uh it has to be done organically hmm. how do you do organically you invite guests my school used to have chief guests several of them who were from the armed forces mm. and i know that this trend has continued in several schools that's one way of introducing and inspiring young impressionable impressionable minds about the armed forces see when i was growing up and a little while earlier uh, armed forces was a glamorous Yes, profession. Even back when I was, was it was, kid, isn't it? Was, it? it was. So it was glamorous. It was uh, considered as a profession. One, it is noble. Uh, secondly, you know, it was also. It still, I feel, is a profession where you are completely dependent, independent, uh, by the age of twenty one, twenty two. Mm. Yes. I mean, you don't need your parents. Yes, definitely. You get a place to stay in. You get. a decent salary to survive there are several other perks that come with it uh, it still is an extremely decent profession to be 
on your own at yeah. a very young age. Yeah. Whereas uh, living as a young working professional in a Delhi or a Mumbai uh, financially is not easy. Hmm. And we all know that. Of course, of the, course. The kind of rents, this, that. So it's not easy. Here, this gives you an opportunity uh, to sort of be your own guy. Hmm. Not be depending on your home, family, for small things in your everyday life. I, I have seen uh, guys, officers, uh, especially in forward locations, without a wallet okay. in their pocket, without money in their pocket. Hmm. They say, Why? we don't need it. Where will we go? Self-sufficient. There are no malls here yeah. to go to. There's, there's nothing to spend. Yeah. We get food from our, from what is made here mm. for us. There's nothing, nothing that we need money for. So it's all savings. I've had these uh, yeah. situations in slightly smaller stations, which are not necessarily forward. They say again, at the most, what we'll need to go to the CSD canteen mm. to purchase something. Mm. That's it. Otherwise, otherwise, what, what do you spend on? So it's a different life. Mm. And uh, coming to. Uh, whether these things are good or bad. Again, I'm, I'm not saying that this is bad. But I'm saying it's not enough to meet your objective. That's what I was wondering. It's certainly not yeah. enough to yeah. meet your objective. I don't want to trigger a controversy, say that uh, uh, this is some kind of uh, you know political ploy, mm. things like that, to change uh, curriculum. Because there's no change in the curriculum. Mm. I read that thing. It's factually exactly what we have read about these wars. Yes. Uh, if it ignites interest if these kind of chapters ignite some interest maybe in one or two kids mm. I think it's good mm. see when the Ladakh issue was happening there were several younger journalists who had no idea that India had fought a war with China in 1962 are you kidding me yeah you cannot be seen yeah. come on yes okay so there is a problem there is a problem uh and forget about younger journalists. I've come across a lot of people, hmm. non-journalists as well, in their 30s, 40s, who are not sure about these things. They, they faintly know something has happened. They're not sure what exactly had happened. Hmm. So yeah, there, there is a problem about awareness on these subjects. Uh, and that's the reason why I think schools should inculcate, families should inculcate a more natural and organic manner of this being pi part of your learning experience mm. rather mm. than your school academic mm. curriculum. It should be part of your learning experience. In my case, as, as I was saying, it was part of my learning experience. Mm. I Yes, as a kid, I had probably more interest than some other kids. That can happen. Some kid might have interest in sports. Some, somebody might have interest in music. The guys who were extremely good at science from a very young age and they read up stuff uh, which is way beyond what is there in the curriculum. But I used to put this and I still feel this is not school curriculum. This is awareness, general knowledge, current affairs. Uh, I love being part of quiz teams, etc. Mm. So that's why all these things helped. If you asked a question and, in, and you knew, you sort of showed off. Mm. Uh, that was, you, you could tell, oh, I know this. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's the culture that we need to... Because there is a problem. People are not aware. That's the reason why a National War Memorial had to be built mm -hmm. in the first place. But, uh, so just to play the devil's advocate, uh, do you need that awareness? I mean, what is the if people are not aware that, you know, we've, India has fought so many battles and, you know, three or three to four wars and you've had scores of officers and javans sacrificing themselves for mm. uh, defending the and borders. you need that awareness to be to to be f feeling aware i mean to, <laughs> to, to to look a little better than the others which is why i then go back to my point that i made earlier then why not uh and then if you actually think about it on a side note by the way it's a bit surprising that no one has thought about this until now in the 75 years of independence that we've had but then I go back to my point I made earlier then you should have I'm not saying do it overnight mm. not saying do it tomorrow do it maybe the next academic year mm. but why not then have a proper look at it and see how can you have sort of a structure to get that awareness built because what you're talking about uh, that it should happen organically. Parents should do it, at, you know, on their own. School should be inviting uh, guests. Mm -hmm. Just an example you give. Uh, that is, 
not something you can always control. I mean, that's sort of like a, like, ha, these are some broad guidelines. This is how you can mm-hmm. go about it. But that won't ensure that awareness. If, for example, a parent feels that mm-hmm. nahin. Yeah, so, it's what? happening. It's that that's yeah. that's what is happening because there's so much, so many other things that have happened that these things have become a little sort of things of the past. Mm. Yes, yes. Uh, I think some something like a seventy one war should be part of modern history curriculum. Mm. There's nothing wrong with it. Seventy mm. one war has, after all, changed the geopolitics of the region. Of Asia, yeah, true. So nothing wrong in having. a detailed chapter in i don't know in history uh, in a history book or in a pol science book uh, for class 11 or 12 and when i say detailed it should be really nuanced that's what i was going to if you also. want to teach this as a curriculum part of a curriculum then it better be nuanced mm. so for class 7 i think it's okay perhaps Le- yes let us be and you know what the big irony of all this is mm. there's no sense of recording military history in our country mm. sure. you've said this no sense times, but... absolutely no sense see wh- who are our military historians people who have been part of these battles yeah. and sometimes they had taken down notes mm. sometimes they had not taken down notes so it's their memory it's the anecdotes That's not and how also you chronicle because, history. And also because they were part of it, they are going to be a bit biased. Yeah, so that's not the way you chronicle history. It can be a good literature reading. Yeah. It, it can make for an interesting read. But if you want to chronicle stuff mm. and make it public, let people know. There's no shame in it. Mm. If you had lost a battle, you had lost a battle. In the larger war. Rezangla 1962 the battle of Rezangla is a classic case in point you had an entire company literally an entire company being eliminated Everybody by the yeah. enemy vanquished but the deterrence and what that battle had done it ensured that those peaks weren't uh, completely you know taken over overnight there was there was there was a there was a sense that you know the indians have fought here well mm-hmm. and all those peaks rezangla richinla were the ones which were again scaled by the indian army at the peak of that tussle and the indian army held on to those positions because they were barren nobody was there 3 years back mm-hmm. and the indian army held on to those positions and that's what got the chinese on the negotiating table yeah so sometimes a lost battle ends up being your uh, cause for one upmanship or whatever you want to call it many many years later hmm. so the point is that chronicle your military history if you want to teach your kids hmm. what happened it should not look like a rudimentary kind of a way hmm. and if there are people who are interested in the subject give them more material to read yeah. see it's not it's not a classic subject that has to be taught it's not chemistry physics science you know it's military history it's not even history it's yeah. military history and as i said uh, normal indian history books should have chapters should have. on contemporary history and 71 certainly is contemporary yeah. history and just to illustrate your point about uh, the lack of uh, military history chroniclers in india and uh, you said ki most of them are probably people who were involved in those battles yeah. or wars uh, my uh, and this is a good illustration because this is my own personal experience and think uh, our viewers and listeners will get a nice uh, vivid uh, example out of it my uh, knowledge of kargil uh, was reading by what was written by journalist mm-hmm. watching a few documentaries were in there and most importantly a couple of books i won't name names right now mm-hmm. but a couple of books by top generals uh, i'm not saying army chief mm-hmm. level but lieutenant general major generals uh, of the indian army who were posted in delhi mm-hmm. uh, when kargil had happened and there's this incident you will be able to recall uh, but there was this, a slight controversy this will register till this date uh, about how the headquarters basically had said ki we had no idea that they were there mm. but there was a top 
ऑफिसर इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर हु हैज टिल डेट क्लेम्ड कि वी हैड केप्ट गिविंग द इन्फॉर्मेशन टू द हेड क्वार्टर्स बट आई वॉज साइड लाइन आई वॉज सस्पेंडेड एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा नाउ द बुक्स दैट आई रेड by the generals that they were who were in delhi the way they wrote it it was as it was disciplinary action taken for on a just cause so that's something i grew up reading mm-hmm. then i met abhishek and i think one of the episodes that we talked about you kind of alluded to this of how there is it's not what quite meets the eye over there mm-hmm. there are two sides of the story it's not necessarily right that the generals over in delhi yeah. were right or the yeah. general over there was right but yeah there is something that ambiguity ambiguity yeah we don't know because like abhishek said it has not probably been chronicled yeah. right and it should be because whatever happened whoever was at fault was probably the reason kargil for example stretched for so long if we see, have a chronicle see, there history will of be, it there will be i'm not saying that you even if it's chronicled you will always find uh, clear answers to what comes out in the public domain uh, the the fog of war of course always plays its part in the narrative uh, when it comes to conflicts but we just discussing this textbook thing yes. and then a lack of uh, military history being chronicled properly i'm just saying that there is too much of a vacuum there yeah there, there is scope for bridging that gap hmm. you can decide what needs to be put in public domain what can be classified i'm not of saying course, make course, everything public to the world uh but there has to be some system hmm. a few years back i think a project was uh, initiated couple of years back by by the mod hmm. uh I, i should actually check up on that where it's gone on Achoo. on sort of uh, history of uh, forward areas locations and things so not just wars there needs to be a larger understanding of what these forward areas are Hmm. who are the people who live there what languages do they speak what's their culture then you'll realize that your idea of nationalism hmm. is completely different from the people who actually faced who've been right at the forward lines and faced the enemy almost with the indian army yeah i don't think that also has been brought out in our narratives ever hmm. when when we say this this thing that you know it's because of people on the borders our forces on the borders we we live our lives hmm. ask those civilians there first yeah. if you feel if you are saying this that is because of them what do they, they feel? feel it's a completely different ball game so let we must bring out stories of people who've actually lived there hmm. and still live there hmm. uh man i think uh, just to you know we are bit uh, self promotional but uh, our podcast is kind of doing that so if you want you can tell your emoji friends perhaps to you know include our us in their project i'm just kidding yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but nee but on a serious note the reason i say that is because something uh, uh, i think you mentioned a few episodes when we were ago when you were talking about uh, the reiteration of the ceasefire along the loc uh, is how uh, life is very different so for us for people uh, sit, sitting in delhi bombay bangalore mm-hmm. kolkata for us it's as though the entire kashmir is a war zone mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. but abhishek and that episode had uh, very nicely talked about how even within kashmir there are people who are actually at the loc and people who are back and for them life is more or less yeah the problem the there life. are the problems the insurgency problems, course, terrorism course, yes, yes. uh this always you know sort of uh, being on the edge that's more of an internal security, internal security problem, problem. Isn't it? yeah but the the shelling and yeah. the war like situation that is seen at the so not for the last couple of years at least but uh, that was seen uh, before the last two years uh, that's something that even kashmiris had a lot of kashmiris had no, not yeah. experience and that's somebody living in srinagar wouldn't wouldn't know would not, would not, not understand not what know. this means and for a lot of people like i said in the metro cities it get of a shocker yeah, like yeah. what really aisa hota hai so that's uh, it's a good point that you made and uh, i think uh, you make a very good point that yeah this is something that uh, at some level if mm. not class 7 but at some level should kind of be yeah. integrated into uh, a person's uh, growing up years it but, should be a life experience i am yeah, i yeah, don't yeah, think perhaps. these are issues that can they should not be read as a subject at mm. least in the formative years come i completely agree you, you cannot be testing somebody on that for example yeah right uh, yeah get your point uh, but there's also a counter to it which is where i uh, came from when i said at the beginning of this episode that uh, i'm not able to make my, make my mind on topics like these but we'll discuss mm-hmm. that after a quick break the biggest criticism that went uh, you know against greg chapel was that here's a man 
that Sachin Tendulkar, who's arguably the greatest opener in white ball cricket, you ask him to bat at number four because you accommodated a Virinder Sehwag, a, a, a Robin Uthappa, you had a sort of Ganguly bat higher than him. And this constant changing to the batting order, people thought that the Indian team wasn't set. And I understand Greg Chappell's idea. Probably today you might, you know, maybe he was ahead of his time. Today you see where you have a situation where you hear from the captain saying, listen, we want every batter to be used to batting at any position. You start seeing batters being sent at different position based on the situation and the kind of batting they do. But at that time, that was the criticism against Greg Chappell. And after India loses, they are out. Greg Chappell is an icon of, of the sport. I mean, he's one of the greatest Australian batsmen of all time. And, and meeting him was like meeting an, an encyclopedia of cricket. In terms of his wisdom, his knowledge about the game, he was clearly a professor of cricket in a way. And I think Greg Chappell was perhaps unable to deal with the egos and the pressures of Indian cricket. He would have been much better off perhaps dealing with an under-19 team where he could actually mould players. He was looking to mould a team. You see, how do you do that when you have already legends of the game in your team? Mm. You know, a Sachin Tendulkar doesn't need to be moulded. He just needs to be given the, the freedom to express himself. Uh, did to a Virender Sehwag, did to uh, you know, a number of Indian cricketers who have played uh, for several years in the game. I think Greg Chappell made that cardinal mistake of, of seeing... Uh, uh, someone like a Sachin Tendulkar as someone also that he was going to mold into a, 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 a new kind of player. Tendulkar didn't need that. Tendulkar needed the confidence to go and say, look, you're the best opening batsman we have, just go and open. And I remember asking Sachin about this and, you know, he was very reflective, introspective about it because he himself had was the one who had brought in, in a way, along with sort of Greg Chappell, thinking he would bring in new ideas, new energies. Raul Dravid bought into it. Raul Dravid, I think, was the one senior player who brought bought into Greg Chappell's mantra. The others didn't. Welcome back. Abhishek and I are discussing military history. Not uh, military history per se, but uh, the need for military history, let's say, uh, in a school curriculum. Uh, not as a chapter, not perhaps as a book that we have on history, civics, geography, etc. Uh, but just generally, and somehow in the large, in a, in a person's upbringing, in a, in a kid's upbringing, somehow having uh, some sense of India's military history uh, in many ways. Uh, and, you know, one of the ways that you mentioned uh, and that you said ha used to happen at your school uh, back in the day uh, was having, you know, uh, retired uh, officers mm -hmm. come and speak. And that kind of reminded me. Not retired, uh, serving. Serving is sometimes. You've like been serving, serving three-star officers, yeah, army yeah, chiefs yeah. who have come. Come. Yeah. Uh, and that reminded me that uh, sometimes it's... Also you know, because many of them were old students themselves. Of course, of course. Yeah, alumni. Yeah. Uh, and it's not always just about military history because there's a speech. I don't know if you've uh, heard about it, uh, but it's by an admiral called Admiral William McRaven uh, from the US mm -hmm. uh, Navy SEALs. And he gave a speech at uh, an event of the University of Texas in the US. Mm -hmm. And it's massively viral on the internet. It's a 2014 speech. Uh, I don't know if you've heard it. And to our listeners and viewers, I recommend everyone uh, do listen to it. It's a 20 minute speech mm -hmm. and it is not about his his experiences are from the military from the US Navy SEAL program and it's one of the toughest uh, units by the way of the US military but what he talks about are essentially life lessons mm -hmm. uh, exactly. which if you take exactly. in your life you just turn out to be a better they human not, being they that's all Desh Bhakti exactly. exactly I can give you similar examples which people will relate to Sam Manik show yes uh I don't know if our viewers, listeners have heard the speeches that he gave in IMA, I think. Mm. The Indian Military Academy. Brilliant. It was about character building. Yes. Nowhere does he talk about, uh, you know, Bharat Mata Ki Jai, Desh Bhakti. The point is that if you follow what you are doing, you'll do your job well. Yes. No matter what the job is. No matter what the job is. And if you are a military personnel, you will certainly make sure that Bharat Mata Ki Jai ho. Oh. Yes. Again, 1969, centenary year of my school, Sherwood College. Uh, Sam Manikshaw is uh, the army chief, comes as chief guest, an old student himself, uh, gives a speech, which is which I've read in the school magazine. Okay. So I'm talking about chronicling. Yes. 1969, we were nowhere. Uh. 1969, school magazine speech I have read in the 90s hmm. when I was growing up as a school kid and what a brilliant speech it's about making sure 
that you relate to your audience. Yes. If he starts going and speaking about uh, military history there, hmm. it's going to be bored. It's very really boring. Yeah. Young guys full of josh. He tells them, I learned how to hate my enemy right here in Sherwood. Hmm. How to hate my neighbor hmm. right here in Sherwood. <laughs> Thanks to St. Joseph's next door. Got it, yeah. <laughs> and that taught me how to hate my enemy. And these are simple, as you said. Yeah. He 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 wasn't a harbinger of peace. Of course. He had to speak like a general yeah. to young guys. Now he's not done any bravado, no chest thumping, just simple things that will ignite some passion mm. in those young minds. Mm. So that's what I mean when I say that school book chapters cannot do it. Cannot do that. Yeah. You completely bang on because I while you were talking this speech by Admiral McRaven just came to my mind and it's exactly, exactly the said, same exactly yeah, yeah. what you said but now I come to the other side of it which is where uh, my fear lies with stuff like this uh, this is if it all goes well and uh, if it's all done uh, and again, there's no way to meticulously do it because like we said, this is going to be a bit disorganized. It will not be a sort of a curriculum f th written set in stone. But there's also then, uh, and this is what I fear, ki, is there a chance of running the risk of going down the way of, let's say, a China or uh, the Nazi Germany or uh, the USSR uh, where uh, the militaries were worshipped Mm. Almost. Mm. Uh, the leaders were worshipped uh, almost, are worshipped mm. uh, still. Uh, and we've seen what's happened to Nazi Germany. We've seen what's happened to USSR and uh, China. I'm not very sure, but we'll see what will happen. Mm. But the point being, uh, and this is a larger question. This is not just about education now mm. anymore. Mm. And this is where I, like I said, cannot seem to make up my mind. Having too much of military, having too much of, even if it's history, uh, having too much of your military's conquests, celebrating it too much, can run the risk of your nation going down that path. Don't you think so? Because I have that fear. No, and that's why, see, I think military, militarism was worshipped more a few years back in India than it is now. Achha. That's my okay. personal opinion. When I say worshipped, I mean personalities. Hmm. The younger generation doesn't know military personalities. True. So the worshipping was done a little while earlier. Now what you're seeing is actually sometimes the military doesn't want that. We've, talked we've, about we've, we've discussed yeah, this, the yeah. kind of narrative that's being said. Yes. If you ask them personally, many of them are uncomfortable with the kind of... Uh, chest thumping that is done hmm. in the name of militarism. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, that worshipping part India has seen before and it did not turn into what happened in Nazi Germany and things like that because we had a different culture, we had a different political setup hmm. which still exists. Yeah, true. Sure. Which still exists and I, I don't think that, that that will change overnight. And obviously, there is no need to just talk about your military glory. Hmm. Uh, drill it in, in when when you're in school. Introduce kids to these subjects, to these to these areas, and then let them decide what they want to do with it. Hmm. What I I feel they shouldn't be completely ignorant of of it as well. Fair point. Because uh, being ignorant of what has happened in the past, be say Kargil or 65, 71, 62, then you don't know about your country's or 47. growth. Or 47. 47. You don't know how your country has grown. Simple. I mean, it's... So I wouldn't want my... Personally, I would want my children to know about it. Hmm. And at the same time, I would, I would not want them to feel that uh, this... Uh, this is equal to f being a follower of Hitler. <laughs> of course, of course, of course, of course, of course. But the place where my fear comes from is uh, we, okay, we don't perhaps have that culture of worshipping the military anymore, like you said. But we do have uh, uh, a tendency of uh, 
treating it as like a holy grail mm. that you cannot question, that yeah. you cannot doubt. And then if you have this simultaneously happening, so because my, my point is ki what you say, I completely agree with you, but that should also come alongside some teachings of critical thinking mm. of telling them or telling people that it's okay to also raise questions. It's okay no, to I'm ask saying, ki why I, I did India that, lose the war against exactly. China. No, and it's okay to learn about the losses as well. Yes. It's okay to understand why Kargil happened. Hmm. Yes. There's nothing wrong well, in it. Yeah. If you want to understand the military, if you want to worship your heroes, then you need to know what went wrong. Why Pulwama happened, for example. Of course. So something did go yeah, wrong yeah, for yeah. it to happen. So, I mean, you definitely need to know. Hmm. There's absolutely no doubt. In my mind yeah, about but it. see, the two of us can agree to that in a room, but my larger fear comes from that. We already have an environment mm. where the military is treated as though, oh my God, you cannot mm. just, you know, question, doubt anything with them. So, how do you get a change with that? Again, you upbringing, I guess, then? No, beyond upbringing. And for that, I think uh, you need another level of political maturity in the yeah. country. Mm. When I mentioned a little while earlier that you need to open up your classified stuff yes. to the world to understand, relate, see, analyze. It requires another level of maturity, mm. which we don't have. I don't think we have. Because unfortunately, uh, these decisions are completely viewed as, you know, what will happen in election if we do this. That's the fact. Yeah. What will this sort of resonate against the dispensation? Mm. Will it it might sort of create sympathy for the past governments. Hmm. And when it does that, it could sort of become, the mahal could turn the tide. So nobody knows yeah. what it'll do. So yeah, that's the kind of politics that we follow. Hmm. It's it's a big challenge. Yeah, uh, Let's uh, lighten the mood and, uh, uh, and like, as we end this episode. Uh, you are a close, I won't call you a military historian, but you're a close follower of military yeah, history. Yeah, You've yeah. read I mean, I, I'm not a, definitely nowhere close to being a historian yeah. uh, because you don't know from where to start. Yeah, <laughs> true. Uh, and before the break, you gave us this interesting snippet of how when Ladakh uh, crisis happened, a lot of young journalists did not even know that India had a war with yeah. chi with China. Um, and why should I, again, I'm, s I'm sorry to those young journalists, why why should I generalize? Generalize, yeah. This yeah. was illicit, sure if, if illicit, it's illicit, them, illicit it's generalization. There were several people. Several people, yeah, yeah. You tend to say journalists because you sort of expect them. Yeah, to expect them. Plus also more. because I'm guessing your circles are filled with journalists. So that's the first yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. thing that comes to mind. Uh, so yeah, so that begs a question, like, you know, as we end this episode, uh, just like on a lighter note, uh, in all the reading that you've done and all the interactions that you've done, you know, people, people like me who do kind of follow stuff like this, what's that one piece of India's military history that you think nobody knows about, but you wish everyone knew about? So, something that you like, you know, ye pata hona logo ko, that you've come across when you're Which like... Which has not come out. Not come, I don't think it's like, you know, hidden somewhere. It's just like, like you said, it's not in the public ha, because ha, baat kabhi hua nahi, hua to, hota nahi. Or, or any interesting, you know, anything that from, from all your readings uh, that you think is like, you know, did you know this by the Let's way? Let's do an episode on this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so many, ha. so many, because there's so little that is out. Ha. So little that is out. Hmm. See, even our sources, what are they? There are some books. Of course. Uh, newspaper, opinions. Hmm. Yes, interactions with 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 the people in the know-how uh, gives you an insight sometimes which is not even there in the literature hmm. because and that insight I call it insight because it's opinion it's of course it's not necessarily might not be uh, a factual position on things hmm. but it does give you an insight and it gets you thinking hmm. several aspects of the 62 war I mean there's so little known hmm. all we know is that uh Nehru screwed it up. <laughs> of course. And uh, the then uh, army chief also. Mm. Yeah, I mean, of course they screwed up. Mm. No doubt about it. <laughs> this, uh, do, who can say that they did not? The entire leadership, mm. for that matter. But it's important to know why all of that happened. Uh, I, I, When the Ladakh thing was happening, I actually went back and happened to uh, 
uh, read the exchanges between uh, Nehru and Zhao Enlai. Okay. Yeah, from fifty nine to sixty two, mm-hmm. and that sort of gives you the build up to the war. Acha. Okay. We have several exchanges. There's also a meeting schedule or something like that, right? Between the two, something like that. I'm not sure. Or there someone, was, there were, they, they met, they, they, they met, met, they met. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, if I'm not mistaken, but there were certainly exchanges hmm. which came out in the public domain, and we we read about it. And uh, yeah, it just gave you how there was, you know. And then I start to feel this is exactly what is happening right now. Hmm. <laughs> exactly the same scenario hmm. okay. was building up the. areas of contention in eastern ladakh aksai chin were quite similar hmm. the kind of stand that the two sides were taking again quite similar hmm. so i said this is this is uncanny I mean, we are heading to war hmm. so this is these are the kind of things that need to be known and to the people but again it's a matter of interest of course of course but then that's i think what you meant when you said this is this level of interest uh, came to you after the kind of exposure that you had if this was taught to you in school like you let us from nehru to uh, the chinese premier yeah. before the war you probably like you know okay kisko padhne yeah. and you would not probably have taken interest no see that w- that wouldn't be taught to you in school because uh, uh, it wasn't something that led to a glorious victory of course <laughs> and then again the second point that if we were to you know uh, seriously think like about for example many people in the general discourse hmm. 1960 pakistan ko to humne hamesha raha hai hmm hum humne hamesha raha hai 65 mein bhi raha hai are pakistan believes ki nahi haraya bhai in 65 yes you believe haraya for pa- and by the way a lot of international community and think tanks think it was a stalemate it was not yeah yeah, yeah 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 that's what yeah. that's what is felt yeah We think it's a dispassionately. Victory. If you look at it, it's still that it was still seventy one. Of course, there's, huh. there's no doubt about it. Ninety nine was a different yeah. story altogether. Uh, one, it wasn't a full a full war blown se, yeah. s- f- war again uh, along the borders, uh, but it was. Uh, sorry to be u- using the cliche. It was cat and mouse game. Ha! It was sort of pushing back infiltration. Yeah, at a large scale. Yeah, much yeah. Much, much larger, larger but much sinister in design. Yes, definitely. uh it, it and to to push back from those heights, heights was a big big task yeah. that's why you had casualties yes but it was that it, it was, was that, yeah, yeah. yeah and it needed military action of full course. scale military yeah. action you had you had an air force operation there you you had your rt's rt guns art, the entire artillery regiment mm. uh, was put to good use the infantry was of course had to scale up mm. physically yeah So yeah, the operation was definitely what resembles a war. A war. Yeah. Right. Uh, cool. Uh, think uh, we'll end it on that note. But uh, one quick point uh, for our listeners and viewers, if they're wondering uh, why Abhishek and I didn't talk about what most people would think we would have talked about the raging topic right now of China, you know, coming out with a new map where it you know lays claim to Arunachal. I'll give you my reason first. I'm pretty sure Abhishek agrees. We didn't even discuss it, by the way. Mm. Is that you know. China करता रहता है। It's everything. not a raging topic for me. Exactly, it's not a raging topic for me either. I mean, like we know. also have a map. <laughs> Exactly, and we also want to the map. They get pissed, and you know they come out of the map, and we get pissed. And so but the only interesting part, though, by the way, that it happened just a few days before the G20 summit, to which uh, President Xi is invited, and he probably might uh, end up coming, but uh, mm-hmm. not sure yet. That I perhaps is. I wouldn't read much. much yeah, uh, just China being China. <laughs> I mean, our map also shows entire Aksai Chin. Of course, yes. yes. Our map shows uh, yeah. entire. And Arunachal China, it Pradesh. gets very pissed about that as well. By the way, I mean, this is. Hota hai rasa. You know, you can't change each yeah. other's maps. Yeah. So. so just to our know, map also shows entire POK. Yeah. Well, physically, neither Always is POK have. with you, nor is Aksai Chin with yes. you. Arunachal, of course, is with you as physically well. as well. Yeah. So just because you know you mentioned China before, uh, just a moments before, and this kind of struck me that. Perhaps mm-hmm. our listeners might be like, you know, इसपे तो बात ही नहीं करना है, सब तो इसी ओर आवाज़ कर रहे हैं, but भाई नहीं, I don't think uh, our listeners, हाँ, uh, very good listeners, yeah, uh, would be interested. Yeah. Actually, our list, I would be interested to know what's the feedback on this, uh, because maybe our listeners, viewers, were not aware hmm. of these textbooks anyway. Yeah, maybe. 
maybe yeah because it was in front page news it was not it was not being it talked yeah, about yeah. in fact i found out about it when you shared it with yeah, me yeah. yeah so that's how i found out about it so i had got the press release huh. i think a couple of days yeah. back so it was at the back of my mind it could turn into huh. an interesting thing to talk about and it did it did definitely yeah. because like i said this topic is something that i always want to discuss with you especially because there are some risks if you don't yeah yeah there are several carefully. risks and there are no clear answers yes. whether you should have this or we should not have this and also uh, Uh, to to something that you was that could we go the nazi germany way and all that see we have our own culture hmm. isn't it where a bit of military worshiping is okay hmm. uh being skeptical is also okay so in that we need this right blend True. yeah let let kids know a bit but ha huh, don't make them blinded as exactly exactly Uh, I think uh, that's a good uh, sentence to end this episode on. And uh, like Abhishek said, we are very interested to know if you knew about this or like you know any other feedback that you have. Mm-hmm. Let us know in the comments below if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, if you are on Spotify, Apple, you can you know just WhatsApp us. We have a number. You can WhatsApp us at eight five double eight nine double six double nine six, or you can email us. Uh, our email ID is pods at the rate india today dot com. That's p o d s at the rate india today dot com. A special thanks like always to our producer Anna Priyadarshini. That's it for this week's defense dose. For more, tune in next week. Till then, stay safe and do not cross any boundaries with our passport. Bye bye.